Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Have you ever wanted to use WLED on the road? So basically when there's no Wi-Fi available and you find it hard using the WLED AP, it broadcasts by default because you can't use the app or you want to control multiple of them and it's a hassle logging into it all the time and you lose your internet connection on your phone and there are all kinds of issues with that. I think I know of a better way. So let's check that out. So the first way, and we're going to be quick about that, is using this whiz mode that I showed off in my last video. This actually works connected to a WLED device that is not connected to any other Wi-Fi or something like that. And you can use it to control one or multiple WLED controllers at the same time. Now I get that this only makes sense if you've already pre-configured all those controllers and don't want to make any changes to those settings. Still, if you want to do anything on the go and you need to have quick control and you can't keep whipping out your phone and stuff like that to turn it on and off or change a preset, this is an excellent option. Okay, just wanted to get that out of the way. For on the road, this is great. Okay, if you don't know what this is, check out my last video. I'll have a link in the video description where we go over this remote and configuring it, etc. I'll likely join it all also later in the video, but I won't explain too much about it because, well, I already did that in the last video. Right, so for today, we're going to my desk view. I need to scoot over a little bit. <laughs> and what you see here is three times a dig to go. Now, very quickly, a dig to go is a LED controller I make with an ESP32 in there that's been engineered to run on USB-C so that you can, for instance, use, well, USB-C power banks. And that makes it a very portable and easy to use setup. I even have an article where you can uh, calculate how much power uh, you're going to use for a given effect and then how much runtime you have of a certain power bank and power bank recommendations and things like that. But this video isn't about that. It's not about power banks or even the dig to go, although it's a very easy controller to use to run WLED. It's about running WLED on the go. So what I have here is three identically configured dig to gos They've been pre-flashed with my firmware that's on install.quinled.info and they're running the stock configuration you get from my website uh, with the newest version of WLED version 14 beta 4. Next to that, it's configured with three times uh, 300 LEDs of uh, 60 LEDs a meter WS2812B. It doesn't really matter, just that it's three controllers and, well, I wanted to show you various ways we can use those. Now, as I started out the video, you can use the WLED AP that it broadcasts by default. Currently, all three are broadcasting that because they're in their default mode. But you have to connect your phone to one of those and likely your phone will think, hey, that's a Wi-Fi network, so let's try to use that internet. But then, of course, this dig to go or WLED doesn't provide internet, so then you basically lose your internet connection on your phone. Depends on the phone and the model how that works, but still. And, well, if you want to control three, that's not going to work either. You can't use the app, because the app only works in non-AP mo AP AP mode. Yeah. And um, the web interface, especially on Android, is kind of buggy because you can't really scroll up or down because then it refreshes the page and it's kind of a bother to work with. So I started looking for a better way to do that. And the better way to do that is actually creating a, a hotspot on your phone and then joining the controllers to that hotspot. And now you'll think, yeah, but I don't want to keep running my hotspot the whole time. That's fine. I've tested this even over multiple days. You can turn off the hotspot and then the controllers, well, you won't be able to control them, of course, but as soon as you turn it back on, they'll auto reconnect to your phone. You can just open the WLED app and control all the controllers again. So either get a phone like uh, this S98 Pro, which has a built-in thermal camera and a massive battery, so it, it can run its, uh, uh, hotspot all day long or you know use a USB power bank for your phone too or something like that but that way 
the controllers join the phone, but the phone can still be connected to some other Wi-Fi network or to your cellular network for internet. So the usage of your phone doesn't change, but you can now just control all the devices. You can walk out of range, come back into range, and they will connect back to your phone automatically. So what we're going to do today is quickly configure that. Now, it might be a bit boring and take long, but I want to run you through the whole process if you actually want to do this. And then let's see how it works. So first step, uh, I'm gonna unlock my phone, of course. And we have to create the hotspot. Now, this will be different on all of your phones. If you have Android, if you have an iPhone or what version you're running, etc., etc. I can't really account for that. Uh, on this phone, I have a hotspot and tethering menu. I go into the, oh, no, don't do that. Uh, use the Wi-Fi hotspot menu. I've configured a name called WLED Mobile. And then I've given it a password, all the lights of course, and it's just w, WPA2 personal. It says turn off hotspot automatically so that when nothing is connected, you don't drain the power of the phone and extend compatibility. I don't know what that is. I just leave that on. So for now, let's uh, turn that hotspot on. And currently my Wi-Fi is off um, because I don't want it to connect to my uh, house network uh, at this moment. So to continue, we actually need to turn that on. And if you look at the icons here in the top, you should see that it turns on next to the hotspot. Now, again, I'm not 100% sure every phone has that capability, but in my experience, most mobile or most modern phones do. Uh, we see all kinds of networks and we're gonna join the WLED AP. Of course, we have three devices here and we have no clue which one this is. I'll zoom that in a little bit for you, but we're just going to go to Wi-Fi settings. We hit scan. It's a new function in version 14. And there we see our WLED mobile, which is the hotspot we just created. Let's uh, connect to that with all the lights. Can't see what I'm typing. Let's hope that works. And now we we'll see some strange behavior because I'm running multiple modules. It connects to the hotspot, but then there's another AP with the same name. So basically it reconnects to that and we do the same thing again. And we have to do that three times. <laughs> if you just have one device, you're not gonna get that issue. So we again want to connect to WLD mobile, all the lights. And then we have to do it a third time. Now, it shouldn't see the Wi-Fi network anymore, but I experienced this also during testing. For some reason, uh, let's go back here and check. We're still connected to a WLED IP. Either I messed up one of them or um, it doesn't really understand how we're connecting to the same device and also the hotspot. I see that two devices are currently connected to the hotspot. So let's try it one more time for this one. Config, Wi-Fi setup. It is saying, okay, let's try and set the password again. All the lights. And while we get this screen, do you like having these kind of failures in videos or would you like to see a perfectly scripted always goes well tutorial? Let me know down in the comments. I think having these errors or issues in there actually makes it easier to follow and better to understand, but let me know down in the comments what you guys think. So now the WLED APs are gone. And if we check in our mobile hotspot and tethering, we see that we have three devices connected. Cool. So now if we go to WLED native, which is the app I use, it actually sees three devices and in theory, they should all pop up online. Of course, they're all named the same, but as you can see, they all have a different IP in whatever range my hotspot is provi providing them. And I can turn this one off. I can turn that one off. And I can turn that one off. So that's all working great. 
And, well, this is basically the basis of the setup, how I would use uh, WLED on the go. Because now if we say, okay, uh, let's let's uh, configure these controllers. Let's make one red. Let's make one uh, green. And let's make one blue. There. And, well, we can see that in our overview menu. And now we're going to turn off our hotspot. So we go to hotspot and turn it off. Okay. Of course, now this will say they're offline. I can still use the button because that's pre-configured from the flash. <laughs> I like that button. I always have... Philip has actually pointed to me that I often talk about this button. I, it's just... I just like a good button. Can't help it. Right. So, now you want to change some of these devices, or one of them, or all of them, or whatever. We go to our hotspot again. We turn it on. There. We go back. We see zero devices connected. Shouldn't take too long. Three devices connected. We go to WLED native, and now we can control them again. Easy as that. And you'll say, okay, but what happens if I don't control them for a day or so? Uh, I've tested it up to two days, leaving the hotspot off, and then turning it on again, and it connected within seconds. Another thing I wanted to show you is that once the dig to goes or WLED controllers have joined the hotspot before and are now without a Wi-Fi connection, they don't actually broadcast the, the WLED AP again. So let's turn the hotspot off there. And now if we look with my other phone um, and refresh that list, we don't see any WLED AP, uh, AP appearing. Of course, if we then uh, restart one of the boxes, so we restarted the green one here, uh, that won't see its Wi-Fi network. So although it'll take a little while, it should suddenly uh, start to broadcast the WLED AP because it can't join the Wi-Fi network that it was joined to. Let's give it a little bit. I think it takes 10 or 15 seconds or so. Okay. And there we have it. That is basically the fallback mode that if a WLED controller can't find the Wi-Fi network, after a while, it'll start broadcasting its WLED AP again. But now, oh, wait, it's gone. What do you mean? <laughs> One moment, please. There, there we have it. But now if we turn on the hotspot, in theory, they should start reconnecting to that and the WLED AP should disappear. There we have it, three devices connected. And, uh, well, the WLED Mobile actually appears on this phone, of course, and the WLED AP disappears. And now, again, we can control all three of them. Of course, this one now isn't green anymore, so let's make it green. There. So that's basically, well, the basics of it how I would do a mobile setup with WLED controllers, because doing it this way, I can keep using my phone just as normally. I can walk out of range, come back into range. I don't need to reconfigure anything or something like that each time. And I can use the app. I can do multiple controllers, and I can even do things like hitting the sync button and then changing the color will change the color for all of them or uh, sending an effect for all of them at the same time, because they're connected to the same Wi-Fi AP, we can use the sync to control multiple controllers at the same time. Now, that might not work on all phones. If your phone has some kind of Wi-Fi wi client separation turned on, that won't work. But most phones that I've tested, or at least Android phones, uh, it works fine with those, right? And we can change the effects and the colors and they should all follow suit uh, nicely. I'm going to change the brightness. Yeah. Um, let's add the uh, the whiz mode into the mix here. So the controller we're connected to, let's uh, go to Wi-Fi setup, and then we have to enable remote. Hit save and connect. We wait a little bit. We hit a few buttons. 
on the remote. There, we go back to config, LED preferences, all the way down. And now it should have seen a remote. Wait, I didn't, not LED preferences, Wi-Fi setup, all the way down. There, it has a last seen remote. So let's copy that, paste it in here, save and connect. Save and connect. Uh, or not. <laughs> okay, I found it. <laughs> uh, okay, it, it, it did save, but for some reason the interface got stuck. I don't know why. Um, okay, wait a second. Let's turn sync off. And now we should be able to control the, with the remote, we should be able to control only this one, right? So we can go uh, on and off, or we can uh, raise the brightness, or we can lower the brightness, and we should see that over here too. Yep, that works great. Now, if you wanted to use this remote, but use it through the sync function, this is getting a bit advanced, you can do that actually, because uh, if we turn on the sync, um, we can actually do off. No, we can't. I don't remember what we could and couldn't do. Anyway, if you want um, the others to follow all the commands, also the ones that are coming in through IR or this new type of remote, we go to config, sync interfaces, and there we also send notifications on button press or IR. Save. We go back. And now if I do off, they all turn off, and if I do on, they all turn on. And if I hit a preset or change the brightness or do something like that, they will all follow suit. So they'll also follow all the commands I send from my remote to this one, and the Wi-Fi network will send it to these other ones then. That might be useful if you're running multiple controllers and the range for this remote, although it's pretty good, like 10 or 15 meters, isn't enough. I don't know whatever scenario that is, but yeah. All right, so that's how I would run a WLED controller in a mobile setup. Like I've done setups at an event or um, other type of, you know, where I have a WLED controller along, often on a power bank like this, and uh, I want to change the settings now and then, or I have two or three controllers and I want to be able to control them all. And I found it very uh, limiting doing that through the WLED AP. But using this hotspot mode, doing that for a few hours, sure, it's a slight drain on the battery, but it's not that bad. And I found it to work excellent, it, especially because it auto reconnects. I can use all the controllers. I can even use the sync feature, which works over that Wi-Fi and it works fine. And in my opinion, that's the best way to do it. Hopefully that was useful to you. And I hope to see you back in the next video, maybe on a live stream or on the Discord server. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.